I want all of you to close your eyes for just a minute with me. And imagine that your child, your niece, your nephew, your sibling, or someone else that you know who was at a public school this week called 911. First at 12.03 to say, please help, I'm in room 112. Then at 12.10 to say, several people have been killed, they are dead. Then again at 12.13 to say, please help. Then again at 12.16 to say, I see eight or nine kids alive. Then again at 12.19, I'm in room 111, please send help. Then again at 12.21 and all you hear is bang, bang, bang. And then again, at 12.36. And then again, at 12.43, please send help, where are the police? And then one more time, at 12.47, to say yet again, please send help, where are the police? The children, in Uvalde, Texas, called the police over and over again, just about five days ago. And that's a paraphrasing of what they said in their calls as they begged for help. You can open your eyes. When we talk about ethical justice, we need to talk about systems change. And this week reminds us of how urgent that is. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. My name is Zahra Bildu, and I'm here on behalf of CARE, San Francisco Bay Area, but as really more importantly as your sister. To say that the call for justice is urgent, that there is no time to wait, and I will talk to you about what changes you need to make in your individual lives and the goals that we set, and you will hear that from me and from many speakers throughout the weekend. But knowing that this was the first session of the conference this weekend, after a very difficult, upsetting, and heartbreaking week, after, frankly, several heartbreaking years, we would be remiss to not start with Uvalde a small town in Texas where yet another mass shooting happened. 19 children won't come home to their families this week. 19 siblings, 19 nieces and nephews, 19 friends, 19 grandchildren. One by one, they were gunned down by yet another shooter who obtained his weapons of mass destruction more easily than most of us can obtain medication. Too young to buy alcohol, he was able to buy a gun. And as he rampaged through the school, 19 police officers waited outside, made the wrong choices, made incorrect assessments about the circumstances, and stood by. They didn't break in. They didn't put themselves in harm's way, as they often tell us they do. And more and more kids were killed. I want to be clear. The police don't keep us safe, period. 
black communities, undocumented communities, and numerous activists and organizations have said this for years. Oscar Grant, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and of course Baltimore's own Freddie Gray were prime examples of the police not keeping us safe. In Uvalde, the police take upwards of 40% of the city's budget. That's close to half. And there were parents who made it into the school to rescue their kids while the police did nothing. There were parents who were handcuffed and detained when they demanded police action. In Uvalde, the police told on themselves. They say that when someone tells you who they are, believe them. It's clear that we need better gun laws. It's clear that the police don't keep us safe. But let's place responsibility where decision-making happens also, our politicians. Day in and day out, we know that our members of Congress can fix this, can do better, but they would much rather accept millions of dollars in donations from the NRA than be courageous and make change. The NRA, which won't allow guns into their convention this weekend, I'm told, but will also block gun control laws. We live in a system that is unjust. Those police officers will not be held accountable. They are legally protected from accountability. Not just when they stand by and don't do their jobs, but also when they go above and beyond, break the law, and harm people. Those politicians will keep their seats. Those politicians will line their pockets. Those politicians will send thoughts and prayers, but do nothing for real change. And so when we talk about ethical justice, I want us to give ourselves grace. We operate in a system that is unjust. And we are trying to figure out how to change it from the inside and the outside. So if, like me, you've been struggling to process the grief of the last several years, because every time you turn on the news, every time you open social media, honestly, every time you pick up a phone call from a family member or a friend, I brace myself for what's to come. On Tuesday morning, I did not expect to hear the news of yet another mass shooting of more political corruption, of more police inaction or complicity in violence, because we had just seen that the week prior. But day in and day out, grief, sadness, anger. You should be mindful of what you consume. You should be mindful of how much is in your closet. Imam Jawad, I'm sorry, I have too many shoes. I will look at purging them. That is important. You should be careful of who you give your money to. Buy from companies that are ethical. Buy from companies that are just. Spend in the bazaar this weekend. Support Muslim vendors in a reasonable and moderate way and keep your wardrobe small. I agree. Manage your consumption this weekend. Convention food is expensive and unhealthy. And so be careful of what you put into your bodies. Be thoughtful of the people on the streets around the convention center. As we drove into the center this morning, yes, the flight was uncomfortable, but we had our coffee. And the seats didn't recline, but they were seats. And then we had an incredible volunteer drive us up to the convention center. As we checked into the Hilton and we knew we'd get more coffee and we'd spend the weekend having a good time. It caught my eye that we passed tents. People who not only are not at a hotel this weekend, but won't be in a structured house next week. If you are in this room, you are very privileged. 
I have said over the years that one of the reasons I can afford to come to conventions is because this is work for me. This is my job. But if it weren't, could I spend the money for the flight on Memorial Day? Could I have the hotel access? Could I afford the registration? If you are in this room, you are privileged and that privilege should not manifest in waste. It should not manifest in callousness. It should not manifest in carelessness. It should manifest in ethical consumption. It should manifest in prioritizing internal and external beauty within reason. It should manifest in thoughtfulness about the people around us and what their needs are. But I would be remiss if I didn't urge you to ensure that it manifested in action, proactive action, action that puts your privilege on the line because you weren't at that school this week. You didn't lose a family member this week. If you are here, you have access to your politicians. If you are here, you can afford to make a trip to your state or na nation, nation's capital. If you are here, you can make a political contribution to counteract what the NRA does. If you are here, you can safely raise your voice, knowing ICNA and MASS and CARE and all of our organizations will help you prepare to do that. We'll have your back if you are persecuted. We'll rally with you to advocate for change. We are advocating for ethics and justice in a system that frankly was not built to perpetuate those things. And that is a much longer conversation, but I don't think I need to convince you that so much of what surrounds us is corruption, is violence, and is greed. So what can you do? Take your grief, take your anger, and speak out. Yes, share the post on Instagram, that's great. Retweet what Sean King said, or what your favorite politician said, or what your Muslim organization said but pick up the phone and call your senator and demand action on gun control, on police accountability, on the money that we send to apartheid Israel, on voting rights, on immigration. Pick up the phone. I want to ask you how many of you have called your elected officials in the last week, but I said I was going to give us grace. So I won't put that pressure on you for last week. This week, if there is one thing that you remember that Sister Zahra said to you at ICNA, it's that enough is enough. We have to move from individual action to systemic change. We have to move from grief to protest. We have to move from anger to speaking out. And so in this system, in this society, and in these circumstances, what we need more than anything is for us to come off the sidelines and say that we will be part of the solution. Jazakallah khair.